In this fast-paced world, ministers are subject to imbalance and overload. Scripture, however, gives us a different picture that self-care is not selfish. Stay with us. Dr. Torben Berglund will help us unpack and defy burnout in ministry. Welcome. You're watching Ministry in Motion, where we share best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Dr. Berglund, welcome to Ministry in Motion. So pastors do burn out. Yes, they do. <laughs> they do. Pastors are just human beings. Yeah. Whether we like to acknowledge that or not, they're just human beings. And whatever other people can have, pastors can have too. You know, I had a conference president to tell me after I made a presentation about this that pastors don't burn out. Hmm. Um, and I wondered what world he lived in. I remember starting ministry at 21 years of age, and I used to hear senior leaders, pastors, brag about the last time they had a vacation, as if that were a badge of honor. Um, but you have seen differently as a psychiatrist, correct? Yes, like both in my, before when I worked as a psychiatrist and after coming into the church, sort of I have had contact with pastors on a one-to-one -one level, but now also on a more systemic level, mm. uh, where we see that burnout is a major issue actually among Adventist pastors, as it is with pastors and priests in other denominations also. So sure. I don't think we, we don't have any... I haven't seen indication that, that we should think it's a much bigger problem among us, but that it is a significant problem, that is for sure. Hmm. And, and we need to discuss sort of why is right. it like that and what do we do about it, both on an individual level, how do we support the individual pastor, what can the individual pastor do for himself, herself, in order to manage it. But yes. I think also the systemic aspects of, of it, what, what is it in our system, uh, in the mm. way we operate, the culture uh, that we have, um, and also how as leaders, how, how our pastors taken care of and supported in their ministry. You know, uh, working as a pastor in our quote unquote culture and system, uh, we serve the local congregation but we also serve a greater administrative body, uh, i.e. the conference or union or division and so forth. And there are expectations on both ends of those spectrums. And sometimes with pastors' desire to uh, be liked or be pleased, could that drive them down burnout's lane? Well, I, I think definitely. And I think to add to that also is the pastor's expectations to himself or ah. herself also that I also think things play a major role so you have all these three uh, uh, <laughs> the local church the conference yes. uh, your superiors and your own self that may be mm -hmm. pulling you in different directions uh, and that may definitely be challenging you know I'll come back to unrealistic expectations but let's dive in and get a baseline definition. What is burnout? Well, burnout, the way it's sort of conceptualized, uh, it's not fully recognized as a diagnosis, okay. uh, even though people are pushing it for it to be, be uh, recognized as, as a mental health diagnosis. Some people are suggesting it should be a subcategory of depression mm. uh, because there's, it, there's a major overlap between depression and burnout. Okay. One of the ways to distinguish between the two is that if it's uh, like a, a, a clear-cut uh, burnout, then, then sometimes people, it will be more specific. The symptoms will be uh, related to the work context or if there would be some other aspect of life where you're burnt out, that would be just 
located to that aspect that, that otherwise in life you will be doing well. Uh. So, so some people, I, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was taking an Uber uh, to, to the airport and I started talking with, with uh, the driver. Uh -huh. uh, he was mid fifties or something. Uh, and he told like about how he had been working in government big projects uh, but then he had sort of lost interest in the work. He wasn't now he wasn't even able to drive in the area where mm. the offices were. That's how strong his aversion towards it, it was. And now he was his plan was to drive Uber the last 10 years <laughs> until he could retire. Uh, so that that's but but like otherwise he was doing well and I think that that's a typical characteristic of burnout that sort of you it's 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 localized ah. to the work context mm. uh, but otherwise you can do well if it's a depression it will be usually more like more global it affects all aspects of life. Got it. So so that that's a way to distinguish it but the way we uh, sort of conceptualize depression now it's like it has three major sort of dimensions. Okay. Uh, the first is what we call energy depletion or exhaustion, right. which is like what it's sort of what we typically think about. Mm -hmm. And this, this, it can be really severe. It can be so severe that you, you basically know almost not able to get out of bed. Mm. Uh, so the, it, it's, it's, a, it's a major thing. Uh, but then there are two other dimensions that mm -hmm. like in our like uh, typical way of thinking that may not be recognized. Uh, but one is what we call where people like mentally distance themselves from work and anything related to work. I and see. that can be people can be have a very develop a negative attitude. Mm. Cynicism. Uh, cynicism, negative attitude mm. towards uh, the people you work for or the people you work with. Uh, so like you can just think in, in the in the context of a pastor. Yes. Uh, if you start becoming very cynical towards like the conference negative uh, about anything related to, to leadership or otherwise like your local church, that sort of like this, the congregation, this is hopeless. Yes. Uh, they are not doing anything. Uh, they are not supporting the ministry. They're not supporting the evangelists and they're not supporting these uh, things. Or even sort of when, when you are trying to reach people uh, mm. and then you are negative uh, towards them, these may be sort of indications right. that you may actually be in, in, in at risk or actually have developed a burnout. So mm. you can have this even without sort of the exhaustion part of it. Got it. Um, and then the third dimension that also is, is uh, very important is what we call efficacy that this is very much like the self-evaluation uh, uh, of how you are doing, where you start criticizing yourself for not doing a good job, not being as productive, as competent yes. as is needed. So, so this then sort of, it's the cynicism, negativism directed towards yourself. Um, and interesting when uh, in my the job I had before the one I have currently uh, we did some some assessments of pastors in, in the division where I worked uh -huh. and what we found is that the pastors like on the exhaustion part many of them they, they didn't score that high there's still a, a significant number who were uh, mm. in had had issues with burnout but on the cynicism part and the so efficacy part that we saw that there were major issues uh, wow. among many pastors and that that indicates that they, they are struggling. Torben you're a medical doctor you are a medical doctor uh, you're a psychiatrist you serve here uh, for the general conference and the health ministries department um, unpack this for me what's the difference between burnout and stress is burnout the result of stress overload, accumulative stress? Uh, is stress and burnout separate in their um, impact or effect on, on a pastor? Talk to me about that for a moment, if you can. Yes, I, th I think uh, with, with stress, that, that's a component in the process of, of, of burnout. Okay. Uh, and stress, it can be in many various dimensions. It can be the workload, it's just too much to, to do, but it can be like other dimensions also. Mm. Like uh, if you don't feel 
uh, that you have a community at work, you feel very much alone. That's a stress aspect of it. it. Uh, if you struggle with conflicts, mm. uh, that can also create major stress. And that can also include conflicts of values to some, some extent. We know that also from Bernard, that's, that's an issue. If, if you see a mismatch uh, between what the values we profess and what's actually what's actually happening mm. um, in the organization in the local church or what what it is uh, if you feel that you're not supported that you're not appreciated that's also that causes stress wow um, and of course really have, that's amazing <laughs> yes so so when we're talking about stress then i think it's important that we see like that we have like a big picture understanding of what what stress is yes. and of course when this becomes chronic long term it can wear, eventually wear people down right so stress in itself it, it's something that can uh, can be a good thing uh, it can like sharpen us making us more alert right uh, help us perform better mm. uh, be on our toes but that's like that it's not a, to be in a stressful situation constantly that's right. not good Got it. Uh, and that, that, that's, I think that, that's what often happens when, when people like, are heading towards a burnout. It's been, become a, like a chronic state mm. that people are in and it just wears people down, down, down uh, over time. Right. Um, and like the burnout may be like the, the end product of a long process. Okay. And the thing is then when, when that is the case, then then to turn things around may not be something that happens in the moment. It may take time. You know, that's very interesting. Um, I have a scripture that's a favorite of mine that talks about the balance of our Lord. Luke 52, 252, uh, Jesus increased in wisdom, the mind, and statue, the body. He was in favor with God spiritually and man socially. Uh, I believe our Lord lived a whole life mm. and um, w w was balanced. Um, but it sounds like burnout is imbalance. It's a overload. Uh, but what has the research taught us uh, about pastors and burnout? Any insight to that? Um, well, we know that, that burnout is, is a major issue. Among, mm. among pastors, uh, we haven't done that much research, like internally within the Seventh Day Adventist Church. But I think what what applies to other churches is, is relevant for right. us. The whole burnout research is started with with health professionals and doctors realizing that they were under a lot of stress and wow. people were struggling and not coping, and and eventually burning out. So that's that's where it started. But then there's been done research that indicates that pastors, that burnout levels among pastors are equivalent or even higher, possibly than it is among health professionals. Wow. So. And I think that, that I understand that very well. Uh, like being a pastor is a very challenging job. Mm. I think it's one of the most challenging jobs you, you can have. Um, Coming from a physician, I'll accept that. <laughs> well, you're welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, but, but like if you just think about it, like uh, the training a pastor has uh, is primarily a theological training, right. some skills, uh, but like you have a bachelor and maybe you have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, but, but if you compare that to the kind of tasks and challenges right. you are expected to do and to do well and do under the eyes of a lot of people, <laughs> uh, then it, it's, it's very, very challenging. Yes. Like wh when I'm, a, I, when I'm a, like a psychiatrist, yes. I have basically, I had 13 years of training okay. in order to be a psychiatrist, right. work as a psychiatrist. Uh, and then I work with like a specific kinds of issues. Um, a pastor, they're sent out there in the field uh, to deal with all kinds of things. They're going to be evangelists, they're going to be administrators, they're going to right. be leaders. They're going to expect it to manage or keep an eye on the economy of the church, finances, right. uh, the buildings, the counseling, right. like all kinds of things. It's, it's basically like to do all those things well, 
mm. uh, you have to be almost a superhuman. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, that I think the challenge is that we may have those kinds of expectations mm. towards our pastors, and pastors may have those expectations towards themselves that they are going to be good at all these things. Right. Uh, but I think we, we live in a very complex world now, do. And, and the pastor and the congregation and the conference, we need to recognize that, that a per one person cannot be excel in all these these areas we right. need to work as teams and mm. pastors have limitations okay. and pastors are different pastors are very different kinds of personalities they have, some may be good at one thing others may be good at other things and that's that's i think that that's one of the big challenges right how do we get the best out of the pastor mm. so they can do what they they are best at one of the uh, Gallup, they have uh, like a survey they do that's called the Q12, they're recognized for workplace well-being. Yes. And, and one of their questions is that I'm able to do what I do best every day. Ah. And that, that, I think that is so important. Uh, if you're going to thrive and enjoy work, you have to be, have the sense that, well, I'm actually able to do what I do best. Yeah. Uh, at least a significant part of the time. Right. Uh, and I think what, what often happens with, with pastors is that they have to do all these kinds of things. And on some level, they may sense and they may be correct that, that they're not doing everything well. Sure. Uh, and that's when, when sort of your burnout issues uh, or the mm. burnout may be looming. Right. What we also know from the research, another interesting thing is that, that pastors who are in churches where they are, that are struggling, churches that sort of maybe are in decline, membership or otherwise, yeah. they are more prone to burnout mm. than, than pastors who are in churches that do well. Why? And grow. Why is that? Well, I, I think again, it's, it's this, it can like easily develop uh, like these ideas that, that you're not performing, you're not doing well. I see. Uh, it can cause a lot of stress. All internalized, these, they internalize it as their failure. Yes, yes. I all see. these expectations, internal expectations, external expectations right. that, that come together. And sort of if you look at the world, sort of th things are not going as, as we all wish. Right. Those kind of situations are, can be very stressful. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's where sort of we need, I think it's very important that we work together. So to right. have this perspective, we're in this together. We don't, don't just say this is the pastor's responsibility mm. or issue. This is where the pastor, the church, the church leadership, uh, the conference, everyone have to go together and, and recognize this pastor may need more support than someone in, in a church that is thriving. Interesting. Um, how did you become interested in this subject? You know, um, you're now working for the church. Mm. <laughs> um, why, why has burnout been an interest of yours, especially in the lane of pastor burnout? Well, I think I've, um, I've grown up as a PK. Okay. Uh, I'm a pastor's kid. Uh, and, Got it. And grown up, <laughs> we have, have many friends who are pastors. Uh, I've, I've seen this from the inside, even though I haven't yes. been a pastor myself. Sure. And I, for me, it's been a concern a long time. How do we support our pastors? Mm. What kind of systems, what kind of initiatives do we have in order to care for the pastor? Sure. Um, I think that, that's like, if no one cares for the pastor, uh, the pastor is very exposed sure. and at risk of, of burning out. And there needs to be a support system for, for the pastor. And that's also, that, that's very important. But then sort of also coming into the church, working with this, talking with pastors, doing some probing into what, what the issues are. Mm. It sort of just has confirmed that this is a major issue that we need to take seriously. Very much so. How can uh, we prevent burnout uh, or recover from it if, if I've experienced it or a pastor has experienced it? What would you say? What would you recommend? Well, I think we have to look at the systemic issues. Uh, they, they are very important that we build a system that supports the pastor sure. uh, in, in, in many ways. 
uh, but then sort of when, when the pastor is in burnout, <laughs> that, that's a bit late. This is yeah. the preventative side and that, that's where conference leadership needs to take responsibility. Church leadership has, has to, to step up to the game. Mm. Um, on, on the individual level, uh, I think what we talked about, the expectations right. uh, to understand sort of what, 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 what expectations do I have? Are they re realistic? How am I dealing with it? Mm. That, 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 that's very important. Yes. Um, why did I go into ministry? Uh. What, what is driving me? And what is keeping me from appropriate self-care? Right. Would you say self-care is not selfish? Well, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's like self-care is essential. Uh -huh. uh, if, if you are in a high performance position, yes. uh, if you don't do self-care, you are doomed. Uh, that that will happen to, to, to anyone, mm. that anyone, that's not just pastor, anyone. And I think this, this is where we uh, need to just like learn from other great leaders, how right. they've, they've managed is like self-care. Um, and that, that's taking care of the other aspects of life. I think mm. we live in a culture very much where there are like, there are two things that we do all the time. We are expected either to produce or we consume. Okay. What produce or reproduce? Well, that, that we are productive. Productive. Uh, so we are expected to be productive nonstop. That is And correct. I think also in, in the church context, we have like, we're going to save the world. Mm. That, that's our calling and sense. And sort of we, we can take this whole, uh, the responsibility on my shoulders. Got it. Um, I like this, it sort of said sort of something that, well, the job, this, the sa job of saving the world, that, that's already taken. <laughs> that's Christ who did that. Mm -hmm. uh, like as, as I think as individuals serving in ministry, uh, serving in the church, we have to, well, we are here to make a positive difference. Sure. Uh, but we must acknowledge that we are limited. Uh, and whether I work 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week, that, that like in the big picture, that doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Right. Uh, and I think that that's an obligation we all have that we have to stay within not only our limits, mm. but also live with appropriate margins. Sure. Uh, oftentimes we, we go into and doing things like a like hundred percent or a hundred and twenty percent. And that's where you have no buffer when things become difficult then, then to manage what, what, what happens. Amazing. And, and also I think you, you may not be actually performing at your best uh, when you are stretching yourself all, all the time. Right. Right. Um, so there's, there's a good book that's called Margins. Uh, that okay. discusses this issue that, that, well, we should leave appropriate safety margins in everything that we do. Awesome. Um, so, so we have something, like a buffer when, mm. when things become difficult. But I think this, this, is, this is a challenge. Right. And you can, people can easily have this, that, like, that self-accusations, well, that I'm, well, if I do self-care, that I'm being lazy, I'm being selfish, yes. as you indicated. Um, but that's, I, I think we, we need to change that. I think yes. it's very important to change that, to understand that, well, as a pastor, you're just a human being. Right. You need to sleep. You should sleep seven to eight hours a day, mm. uh, as we recommend to anyone else. <laughs> uh, you need to rest. Yes. Like we are Seventh-day Adventists. We, mm -hmm. we uphold this Sabbath as a day of rest. Right. But for many pastors, they may struggle yeah. to have this, this day of rest. Sure. Um, and I sometimes I've been, uh, I hope I'm not being too heretical, but I've sometimes said to pastors, well, if you cannot keep the Sabbath, <laughs> then keep Sabbath on another day of the week. Sure. Because you need it. I get you it. it, yes. And then taking care of your family, of your relationships. Right. And making sure you have that like personal private support system mm. uh, and that you also do for them what, what you should do. That, that you're not just a pastor for your church, uh, but you also have an obligation to your family, to your friends. Sure. And, and to be there for them. And of course, all the, like these healthy lifestyle principles, eating properly, mm -hmm. uh, exercising, uh, taking vacation time, as yeah. you said, like that, that's yeah. so important. Yes. The thing is, if we do 
appropriate self-care, uh, then we will often be more efficient and our work will be more high quality. Awesome. It may not be like this, the same quantity, right. but in the end, sometimes quality matters more. You know, uh, as we close the uh, program, um, does Ellen White have anything to say about this? Yes. <laughs> I, I love a quote uh, that she does, and I often, when I talk to pastors about uh, these issues, I, I love to quote it. Uh, this is from the Re Review and Herald, 1893. Wow. And it's, it's titled the article, Come Ye Yourself Apart and Rest a While. Yes. With a reference from the Bible, from what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. And I, if I may read it. Please. Um, she says, and listen to this, this okay. it's good. She says, our God is ever merciful, full of compassion and reasonable in all his requirements. Mm. He does not require that we shall pursue a course of action that will result in loss of our health. And there's so many pastors yeah. now and historically that have worked so hard that they have impacted negatively their health. And her husband as well. She's writing from that experience. Yes, it was a big problem yes. with, with early pioneers. That's, that's where we got the, in the context, we got the health message. Right. So God does not expect that we should work so hard that we lose our yes. health. Yes. Uh, or what she says, the enfeeblement of our powers of mm. the mind. Uh, he would not have, and here she's speaking very directly, he would not have us work under pressure and strain until exhaustion follows. Wow. or burnout right. follows, we could say, and the prostration of nerves. nerves. The Lord has given us reason, mm. and he expects that we shall exercise reason. Like we, we, right. It's our obligation, like we, we are here to serve and minister, but we also have a duty to be sensible and exercise reason and act in harmony with the laws of life implanted in us. Mm. That is the health message right. that, that we have as, as a church, obeying them that we may have a well-balanced organization, like yes. a good, good, that we are functioning well, physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. So this holistic perspective, like the pastor uh, should model this as leaders, we need to model this. Wow. And this is my appeal also, uh, especially to church leaders, to, to be go in the front, lead from the right. front on, of this, be good model examples mm. so that your pastors can follow. And the same thing for pastors, be a leader for your congregation right. in, in how to live this holistic life where you live well balanced, physically, mm. mentally, socially, and spiritually, all, all of them. Uh, not going to extremes on any of them, uh, but taking care uh, of yourself and your family uh, and, and those you are responsible for. Thank you for this uh, great um, holistic approach to the understanding of burnout. And uh, may the Lord bless you as you continue to spread this message. And uh, I'm grateful that you've shared and I'm honored that you came to join us. Mm. Appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. As we discuss burnout among pastors and ministry leaders, Dr. Berglund gave insight regarding burnout. He said, burnout is a major issue among clergy. Number two, burnout has overlapped with depression, but the symptoms of burnout are typically specific for the work context and may not be experienced in other aspects of life. Number three, he said, burnout manifests itself in three ways, exhaustion, cynicism, and inefficacy. Number four, chronic stress and excessive internal and external expectations may also lead to burnout. Number five, pastoral training may not be sufficient to equip for the various and complex challenges of ministry. A pastor cannot be expected to do everything well. Number six, self-care is not selfish, but is essential to high performance. Church leaders and pastors should model a holistic, balanced, and healthy lifestyle. You've been watching Ministry in Motion, where we share best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. 
Join us via podcast, YouTube, and Facebook starting at ministryinmotion.tv. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you.